رسولنا صلوا على حبيبنا صلوا على نبينا صلوا على شفيعنا A praised person who came into the world in the year of 571 in Mecca, the place of the previous prophets. A messenger who at the age of 40 received revelation from Allah via angel Gabriel and who obtained the task of prophet. A human being who had the trust of the society wherein he lived already long time before he became a prophet. A confidant to whom even his enemies trusted their possessions. The final link in the chain of prophets which started with the blessed Adam and went on with the blessed Noah, Moses and Jesus. The last warning sent by Allah, who called the entire humanity up to acquisition of knowledge, to kindness and peace. He is a guide who was heralded joyously by all the prophets who preceded him and he himself a confirmation of the previous prophets who preceded him, an imam in goodness, who went through unjustest treatments like all prophets, who was oppressed but who did not take any revenge and who was always kind to friend or enemy, a guide for all the people with his life and moral and his biggest miracle, the Quran. He is the blessed Muhammad Mustafa, bestowed as a mercy for all the worlds. In the city where we lived, Medina, the Jews, Christians and Muslims came together under common denominators and they lived in harmony. With the message of the Holy Quran, O oh people, we have created you from a man and a woman and we have divided you into tribes and nations so that you may know each other and get into contact. He has always defended that diversity is a wealth. He was not for struggle, wars, and injustice. He fought for love, respect, and happiness. That is the reason why he always said, I was sent as a mercy for all the worlds. He has taught us to love each other. He said, O oh, servants of Allah, be brothers. He has advised those who followed him to establish a world within the universe wherein knowledge, kindness and peace will continue until the day of judgment. He is a prophet who 14 centuries before the Universal Declaration of the Human Rights has said that each man deserves respect and is unique. He is the envoy who has said that each human being is of value and that all people are equal like the tooth of a comb. He is a guide who compares the killing of one human being to the destruction of the whole world. He has forbidden the exploitation of the human being by another human. He has indicated that the person who can sleep while their neighbors are in hunger does not belong to us. He attached importance to solidarity by establishing of foundations who supported the people in need. He has stimulated cohesion and solidarity in the society. He declared that the best under the people was the one who served the people best and he emphasized the importance of servitude. He even considered the smile to the people as a sadaka in order to endorse people to kindness. Whereas in the 7th century the women's rights were still in darkness 
and the woman was considered as lesser than a slave. He has stood up for the fundamental rights and freedoms of the women related to education, suffrage, heritage and the acquisition of possession. He has entrusted couples to each other. He has exalted motherhood. Furthermore, he said that the path to heaven lays under the feet of the mother. In a society where having daughters was considered as an ignominy, he has praised those who gave their daughters a good breeding. He attached value to knowledge. I have been sent as a pathfinder, he said. He has conveyed the message of Allah. Are those who know equal to those who do not know to people? He has given instructions to learn from the cradle to the grave without any distinction between man or woman. His regulations have inspired philosophers and scholars like Ibn Rushd and Avicenna, who have contributed to the enlightenment of the temporary European civilization. According to his teachings, the earth is the work of Allah and his art, thus it deserves to be respected. He has protected natural sources. He has imparted even not to waste the water of flowing rivers. He emphasized the maintenance of public assets and public places. He considered it as an exigency of faith to remove bothersome things in public places or on roads. He has encouraged a healthy lifestyle. He has integrated personal hygiene in daily life and considered this as a requisite of faith. In the 7th century, he stimulated oral hygiene and the attention for healthy teeth by strongly recommending the use of a toothbrush. He said that having a healthy body is a great favor and a gift of Allah. He was a prophet who advised not to eat before getting hungry. Also, he advised to stop eating before getting saturated. With these recommendations, he started centuries ago with prevention in relation to health. The first 13 years of his prophethood passed by with repression and torturing by his enemies. Nevertheless, he did not accept the use of any kind of violence against him. He was even forced to leave his place of birth in order to stay far away from violence. Also in Medina, where he emigrated, he and the Muslims were not left undisturbed by his enemies. However, only at the moment that the enemy had prepared an army and was moving to destroy them, permission was given for a war of defense. Even 1400 years ago, he taught people that peace is the basis, but not wars. He commanded during wars women, children, clergy, the surrounding environment and the places of worship had to be left undisturbed. He was always a proponent of peace. Although there were articles to their disadvantage, he signed the Treaty of Hudaybiya to give the peace a chance. He was always an advocate of peace. The religion, he proclaimed, was namely called Islam, and Islam meant peace. While only in the 19th century, the rights of animals began to come to the fore as a subject of justice. He was the one who in an era wherein even people were sold as slaves, announced that also animals have rights. He was also the one who cut a piece of his cloth on which a cat had fallen asleep while he was reciting the Quran and walked away there in order not to disturb the cat. He was also the one who considered goodness against animals equal to goodness against humans. He was also the one who prohibited the hunt on animals for pleasure and relaxation except for food. 
He has rendered the humanity such a way of life that everyone who sincerely followed his path could find harmony and direction. And on the age of 63, in the city of Medina, which changed in a home of rest and happiness, he was reunited in tears amongst his lovers with his almighty beloved one, his Lord. Oh, my God. 